And so the, the, the thing I'm always pointing everyone to is that Romans chapter 8 moment where Paul says that all of creation, the entire cosmos, is groaning, moaning, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed because when they're revealed, they can free the creation. And to me, that looks like renewing it. That looks like bringing all of what we had lost back into the picture. We're not going to go backwards because that's not the way forward. It's never backwards. But the way forward certainly isn't the direction we're going either. It's got to be some newly charted course that brings back into our consciousness that that spiritual being reality was real, or we kind of have to discount 98% of human history. And then the trouble with that is that's when the gospels were written to, you know, so you can't do that, right? You have to know that they're telling the truth. Uh, they were just seeing kind of a different part of the world than we see today. So that's it in a nutshell right there. Now, um, in- engaging with that outside of ascensions, right? Yeah. Ascensions and doing meditations to kind of consciously go in. Um, th- those are ways to engage, but engaging with with the elements, with the spirits outside of of that uh, in your day to day. Say when you go to the beach. Say when you're in the sun, and the sun is there's a, con- a relationship with that yeah. sun. It's giving you yes. vitamin D and like uh, yeah. or C, and um, a bunch of stuffs happening. The grass, the trees, hugging the tree. You know, like all of, yeah, you know, just, it. Uh, yeah. understanding that you know Gaia, the Earth is alive. The Earth is a being as well. Um, yes. How does that look in engaging with that uh, in real time versus like going in the um, uh, imagination or the ascensions to do it? Like, how does right. that look? How does your relationship look when you feel the wind blow? Is there for me, it's immediate yeah. gratitude. It's like, hey, I know you're there kind of thing. Like, how does yes. that look for you? Yeah, that that's uh, maybe that's the best question of all is the one you just asked is, OK, so how does it play out? So I'm. I'm a big fan of the way that Jesus demonstrates kingship because it's so counter to the world. So he, Jesus never wants to rule anything he doesn't know. So he only rules via relationship. He never rules by, he's, he's not interested in anybody paying homage to him. <laughs> That's good. You know, he, he's never asking people to come kiss his ring. You know, <laughs> yeah. his yeah. first, I mean, it's just like what we started this conversation with Derek is he wants to know you. And then he knows if you get to know each other, you'll figure it out that he's a king, you know, but he doesn't need you to come kiss his ring. He doesn't need you to pay homage. He rules via relationship. If we're going to step into dominion as humans in this cosmos, it will be because of relationships. So as I got to know the wind and the waves and the mountains and the trees and the earth and the stars, I, it's, it, was, it took time, right? It took time out of my day and my person to go, all right, I feel you. I know you're there. Who are you? What's your name? I know there's probably thousands of spiritual beings that could represent the ocean, but I bet there's one, at least one, that's that's connected to me that represents the ocean. And I want to know that one, right? So I love the storm. I love thunderstorms. I just think they're beautiful. I think they're powerful. I just, I'm always in awe of them. And so I, early on, I would always see this spiritual being. Now I'm using the eyes of my heart. I'm using the imagination to do this, but it's building a relationship that got stronger over time. So I'm seeing the spiritual being in the clouds that I knew by the name Marshall. I mean, giant, powerful presence, you know? And, uh, you know, when we just, you know, I don't know over, you know, walking in a, a summer afternoon, I would see him in the building thunderstorms and we would always converse. So this is a fun story about how this played out. I tell this story all the time because it was like a foundational moment for me that I thought, okay, I'm not crazy. So I got invited to, I got invited to officiate my buddy's wedding years ago in Baltimore, Maryland, summer wedding. And it's outside. It's in the courtyard in downtown Baltimore forecast for the day is great until about four o'clock. And then it's thunderstorms. Their wedding was at like four 30 or five or something. So we get to the place we're setting up in this courtyard, skyscrapers all around. And I'm telling you, the sky was already deteriorating. Like you could tell storms are coming. Now, like any good wedding officiate, I had prepared like a 10 minute version of this wedding in my head. Like if it gets bad, I'm going to be like, do you, do you kiss her? Let's go. Let's get out of here. You know, (laughs) we were going to do this if we had to do it quick and in the rain, you know? So the time comes for the wedding. These clouds are building the, you know, it's, it's, it looks bad. 
And uh, this, this buddy of mine had kind of like a, a Jewish Hebrew background. So they're getting married under what was called the hupa, like a canopy with four poles. And so uh, there, you know, I, everybody comes in. I ask the dad who gives this woman to be married. You know, all that stuff is done. They have a time where there's some music being played and I got to kind of like step back. And that's when the wind started to pick up and the storm started to come in. And my buddy, the groom, is having to hold the pole of the hoopah because the wind's threatening to take to blow it over. And that's when I felt the first drop of rain hit my nose. And I said in that moment, okay, I know the storm. I've met him. I've met the spiritual being. We've talked so many times. I'm going to go talk to him right now. So I, I said, all right, Marshall, where are you? And he comes right in front of me. I'm using the eyes of my heart, right? And I look at him and I just said, I need your help right now. And he looks at me and he goes, it won't rain. And then I watch him go. I watch him fly up just using the eyes of my imagination. And I watch him perch on the skyscraper. So did you, okay, with that, did, did you yes. facilitate the imagination? Like, I'm going to call you down and I'm going to see you come and talk to me. Then I'm going to see you yes. leaving. Or did it just pop in for you? Bro, it was, I was, I was the one that initiated Okay. Because okay. I was like, I know him. I might as well put this to work. Yeah. You know? Like we're at this point where we're friends, right? I mean, it's been years of building a relationship and over the years of building the relationship, sometimes it was me and sometimes it popped in. Okay. But it's like, you know, if I want to get a hold of you, like I know your number, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so like I can get a hold of you because we have relationship. Like I know if I, if I'm traveling through your area and I can stop and see you, Maybe not everybody gets that, right? But I know how to get a hold of you. <laughs> hey, right? say that. Say that again. <laughs> go, <Right>? But go ahead. <laughs> so, I because we we've talked like we we've developed something. Mm -hmm. So there's times when you reach out to me. There's times when I reach out to you. But man, if I needed you, I know how to get you. Yeah. If you need me, you know how to get me. And uh, so I again, I watch him fly up. I watch all of his buddies come out of the storm clouds and perch themselves on the skyscrapers around the storm. Did you facilitate that, or did that, or did you initiating end up having you know that part? Place? I felt like was just happening. Okay. So I initiated the conversation, and then I became the observer. Okay. So then I'm watching it all come around. Okay. So this is not a joke, and I know it's hard to believe. So if no one believes me because you weren't there, I totally understand. But not only did it not rain, but those clouds parted and the sun's rays peeked through a hole in the clouds and lit up the hoopah. We did the entire hour ceremony, not anything, no wind, not a drop of rain, no nothing. And, uh, you know, they kiss each other. I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Off they go. I've dismissed the wedding party. Now I'm dismissing the people, like the whole crowd of people in the courtyard. Off you go to the reception, wherever it was held, thankfully indoors, you know. So half the people had left. I'm still up there smiling in my robe, you know, like just being the good guy. And the clouds opened up and the rain came down in a sheet. It just came down like someone had dropped a bucket in this courtyard and the wind came through in gusts. I was trying to save this piece of like fine China that they had <laughs> taken communion with. Yeah. And, it, and the table it was on was threatening to blow over. And as I'm saving the China, the hoopah finally gives out. And a pole, as it blows over, cracks me in the back of the head. It's not a joke. At which point, and I didn't do this in my, the eyes of my heart. I said this out loud because everybody's running for cover. No one's watching me. I looked up at Marshall where he was perched on that building. And I said out loud, really? And he goes, he looks down at me and goes, were you hurt? Mm -hmm. And I went, no. And he goes, buddy. You asked for an hour. We gave you an hour. <laughs> he was like, if you wanted an hour and 10 minutes, you better be specific next time. And it became this joke of an experience, right? Like it was funny. It ended in me being soaked. It ended in laughter. But I'm telling you, there was, that was one of those moments that I walked away from and went, I will never doubt this reality and that I'm designed to create a relationship with it. So that it's not something that's unknown for me. It becomes like a friendship. And it makes me think of, uh, if you've ever read about the life of Patrick, like St. Patrick in Ireland, it said of Patrick, he had an angel he met with every week named Victor. It was, Vic it was Victor. It was short for Victoricus. Patrick called him a, nick a nickname because they were so close, him and this angel. 
And it said, Patrick met with Victor like a man meets with his friend. And that to me is a picture of where we're headed. Is that kind of a relationship with the angelic world? And if you get the scientific revolution, if you get that key, then you know that the angelic world is connected, is represented in all of the aspects of the world around us in nature and in the cosmos. So you put all those pieces together and maybe we can see where this thing is going, you know? That's awesome. Um, So you mentioned that with the wind, engaging the wind and these different entities and things like that. And then I I know you've been mentioning mountains and stuff and the grass and the trees and things like that. And I'm sure for each, each element, and then elements within the elements as well being alive. And I'm sure we can go into great detail.